Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today we're making biscuits, muffins, bread, and blueberries. Now, dolls, yes, I said blueberries because the blueberries are for the muffins. So let's start with the muffins. Now, dolls, in this instance, I'm using a little metal muffin tin. Now, this little muffin tin is nice and solid, and I actually use it to bake my polymer clay muffins. Now I used a natural color clay that I mixed with several different types of clay to get it to the color of dough. And I made little balls and just pressed them into the muffin tins. Now dolls, my muffins when I'm actually baking are a regular shape. I'm not the kind of person who makes perfect muffins. So my dollhouse muffins aren't going to be perfect either. But I am trying to shape them so they'll have that little peak shape um, on the top, the way they look when they first come out of the oven. Now I'm using like a metal clay tool. Now dolls, don't be stressed. If you don't have something like that, a toothpick will work. You can do the same shaping with a toothpick or the side of a little plastic spoon or something. So don't be frustrated if you don't have specified tools. Now here's an example of a plastic muffin tin. Now, although I'm going to shape my little muffins in this tin, I can't bake with it. This is a little Crisenbond muffin tin, and it actually is not tin, it's plastic. So it would absolutely melt in the oven. So be aware of things like that, dolls, when you're doing your miniature or dollhouse baking. So dolls, almost everything I'm making in the video today is made with some form of polymer clay. So I don't really have a favorite so whatever type of polymer clay you're using, make sure you use the directions on the back of your packaging to make sure you use it safely to get the result that you're looking for. Now, dolls, I stuck the little pans on some painter's tape just to keep them in place while I work. Now, be advised, working with polymer clay takes practice. So be patient with yourself. Allow yourself space to improve. I've been working with miniatures and clay for years and I'm still not perfect. There's no rush. Work with your items until you're satisfied. And if you're not, go ahead, try it again. The more you do it, the better you become. Now here I am trying to gently remove the biscuits from the baking tin. And I had to be really, really careful because I didn't want to distort the shape. I really wasn't so much concerned about the top shape as I was with the bottom, the portion that fit inside the little cup. Because I feel like if it was a little distorted on top, I could shape them a little bit even after they're baked. But if the bottom is distorted, I felt like they would be ruined. It's funny, that pan looks like I've really been baking. <laughs> now here I am, dolls, rolling out my clay to make my biscuits. And I just rolled it out with the side of a big drinking straw. Use what you have as tools for your clay. And I do use a little talcum powder to keep things from sticking to the table. But you definitely want to work on a clean, dry surface. I do a lot of my clay work on top of tiles because it's easy to take them right from my table to the oven. Now I cut my biscuits with a small cylinder I had. It was small and round. I thought it was a good size. So now that I've made the biscuits and the muffins, I need to make the blueberries. Well, dolls, I'm going to let you know ahead of time, my blueberries are not going to be a exact replica of natural blueberries. But from a distance and in a basket, I think they'll pass. So I mixed my clay together and I actually used some red and some blue to make this rich, deep purple color. Because blueberries always look purple to me. <laughs> now, dolls, after mixing my colors together to get it to shade that I like, I started to make little teeny balls, little purple balls, as small as I could. It's really difficult to make really teeny balls, and mine are probably not in scale for actual blueberries. But I think in a basket or a bin, they'll pass. Mm -hmm. So in the process of making the blueberries, I began to think, hmm, I need a basket or a bin. And I decided to make a little basket out of some burlap. So I took my burlap and used the little crate that my milk bottles came in. The milk bottles I used in the icebox video, I actually used it as a template for the size to make my little burlap basket. Now I split the sides of the burlap and I used my fabric fusion. 
it's really great because it grabs fast so I didn't have to worry about the burlap coming apart after I applied the glue. So it made it really quick and convenient for this little project. After I split both sides, I began to fold in the corners and overlap them. I hope you dolls can see what I'm doing here where I bring the two split pieces together and you want to do that on both sides. Here we go again, bring the two split pieces together and overlap them, put in the fabric fusion kind of on the halfway point in the middle and you overlap it, just squeeze it because the fabric fusion will grab really quickly. Just squeeze it for a couple seconds. Now you see that I still have that one flap on each end that needs to come up. So you just apply a little fabric fusion to the last folded layer and just fold up that side. Now you want to make sure it goes end to end so your basket will be sealed and it'll look like one piece. You don't want it to be where it looks like it can peel back. So make sure you secure it on the edges and just hold it long enough that it can catch. Repeat the same process on the other side. And after you've completed both sides with the fabric fusion and holding it up, you have a nice little burlap basket. Now this little technique has so many different uses. And right now you can see dolls that the basket is pretty pliable, but I want it to be really firm, more like a real basket. Now originally I considered adding a handle to the little basket, but I decided against it. I like the basket open. But to make my basket nice and firm and more basket-like, I decided to dip it in my water and glue solution. Because most of the items I'm using are pretty small, I might use like a half a cup or a cup of water to two globs of tacky glue. Now, any kind of white PVA glue will work, but I like the tacky glue because it's white and it dries clear, but it makes your items nice and firm. I actually use this solution for my curtains and tablecloths to give them the drapey effect. Now, in this instance, I wanted my basket to be a little bit squarer, so I tucked it inside the metal basket that I used as my template. So let's allow that to dry. So here are our muffins. They've been cooked and cooled and they're ready to be decorated. And they're the, the extras that came from the little plastic tent as well. I love this part, dolls. This is actually my favorite part. And oh yes, there are my big gigantic blueberries, but they're the right color. So they'll work well in my basket. So now that my basket is dry, let's pull it out and see how it looks. I really love my little green milk crate. It was perfect for helping me size and form my little burlap basket. Many times dolls, because I don't like to measure, I'll use other miniatures to help me stay in scale. So look at my little basket. It's really squared out really nicely and it's firm because of the glue solution. Now I can trim it down. So here I'm just trimming it down so it'll be low enough so you'll see my big gigantic out of scale blueberries. <laughs> I'm really tickled about the, how the little basket turned out. And keep in mind, dolls, you definitely could add a handle across the top or two on the ends. It's up to you. This basket would have even looked cute with my eggs. <laughs> so here I am, dolls, making more dough. Now, as you can see here, I mixed several colors. I used some yellow and I used kind of a, a peach color and white and blended together until it looked like, well, actually bread dough. I realized I needed a few more biscuits and I wanted to make a loaf of bread. So I used that same little cylinder that I used for the first set of biscuits and just quickly punched out a few more circles. I'm preparing all of this because when I turn my oven on, I just want to make it worth the while. And as I mentioned, dolls, sometimes you just make more than you need for your particular project. So if you actually need some more later on, you have spare on hand. But I actually think these biscuits are going to get eaten up pretty quickly because in an old rooming house, the kitchen is a really busy place and extra biscuits will always come in handy. So last but not least, I'm going to make my little loaf of bread. And this is the little bread pan. Now this pan is like the little black muffin tin I have. It's by Crisenbahn as well. And I'm just shoving in a, a clump of clay and just smoothing it out. I got a little piece of purple in there I had to scoop out. And dolls, I'm not really making any specialty type of bread. 
just what I would consider a general loaf. And I want to give it the impression that it's already baked and the yeast is puffed up all around the sides. And I'm going to kind of give it the little dip in the top to look as though the bread has cooled and it began to drop at the top. But I'm just trimming off the edges. And again, I've got little clay tools, but use whatever you have. Toothpicks, a side of a pencil, or the side of a paintbrush. Even the side of a crown makes a great rolling pin. <laughs> and here's my little loaf. I've got my nice little shape. I put the little dip in the top. And now I'm popping it out of the little baking pan. Because remember, I can't bake that pan because it's plastic. So here I am with a little brush tool, just adding a little texture to my biscuits. A few little dips and rumples in the side and the surface of the biscuits adds a lot of realism. And now it's time to separate my baked goods from my berries. So my berries are going to pull them out and actually put them in the little basket because that's going to be their home. I'm going to set them aside so I can get to my favorite part, which is decorating the muffins and the biscuits. I don't know why dolls, but the finishing portion is always the most fun to me. And here are my little biscuits, all baked and solid and ready to be painted. I can't wait to start mixing the paint. So let me get these berries out of the way. Wow, my blueberries are so big, they almost look like plums. But from a distance, they look fine. Thought about that handle again. Yeah, I'm just not feeling it. Let me stop playing dolls and get on to those muffins. Okay, so here we are with all our little baked goods. I'm sure by now you dolls have gathered that these are going to be blueberry muffins. And so I just stuck them down to a piece of painter's tape, which will make them easier to paint. They're so tiny, and I don't want to chase them around my work table because they're rolling around. So just sticking them to a piece of painter's tape or even a piece of masking tape just to keep them in place. Okay, dolls, now I'm getting to the really fun part, which is mixing paint. Now, a lot of times I allow little Gretchen to do painting, but this is not one of those instances. I'm using red and blue to make a purplish shade for my blueberry um, muffins. And yeah, this is a little tedious. I'm not going to let little Gretchen participate in this particular portion, but I will allow her to assist me with the shading. And here I am mixing my red and my blue to get like a purpley color, a color that looks similar to the clay that I mixed for my blueberries. Now dolls, make sure you mix your paint really good because you don't want the colors to separate in the midst of you painting your blueberries onto your muffin. So here I just separated the biscuits from the muffins so that I won't get blueberry on my biscuits, although that might be a tasty treat as well. So here I am adding my blueberries to the outside of my muffins. Now dolls, I'm actually using the smallest end of my ball stylus, but you actually could do this with the tip of a toothpick, the tip of a pencil, or a pointed wood stick. There are a lot of ways you can do this. So again, don't be frustrated or feel like you don't have what you need to do this project if you don't have all the things that you see me using in this video. Look around and see what you have available. I want you to feel free to improvise. Don't ever allow your creativity to be hindered by lack of supplies or materials. Create with whatever you have. I've got to tell you, dolls, I'm having way too much fun right now. I'm really tickled by the irregularity of the shape and size of these little muffins. I can hear my daughter right now saying, yeah, those are mom's muffins, even in miniature. Those are her muffins. Now that I completed the ones on the tape, I had to do the ones that are in the little pan. This is so much fun. I hope you dolls try this project. It's really going to add a lot to the breakfast room table. Now after I thought my little berries were dry on top, I did do a few little speckles on the bottom. I did do a lot, but I did want to give the impression that some of the blueberries were showing through the bottom and the sides of the muffin, just for a little added realism. Now let's get to the shading. So when it comes to shading dolls, I actually use chalk pastels. Now these chalk pastels, I don't even want to tell you how old they are, but just so you know, they were a part of an art class I had in high school. 
So just so you know, chalk pastels last forever. And so I just shaved off a little bit with the side of my craft knife, a little orange, a little yellow, and a little brown, because those are the tones that are in baked goods when they've been cooked. And I want to add them to around the edges and the sides of my baked bread, the muffins, and the biscuits. For shading, you can even use eyeshadow or just acrylic paint. And speaking of acrylic paint, I have this folk art golden sienna color that I really love. And I'm going to water it down a little bit because I don't want the color to be uh, opaque or solid. I want it to be very light because I'm going to layer my tones of color. Now dolls, this is an instance where I will allow little Gretchen to do her thing because she can't hurt anything. And because it's going to be a really light wash, she can take her time and she can have as much fun as she likes. So I allowed her to use the brush and I'd already watered down the paint to the tone that I wanted her to use. And I really didn't try to hinder her too much. And I did allow her here to stick the little biscuits into the muffin tin and she did a really good job. She's doing such a good job. I think I might allow her to help me with those biscuits. <laughs> now this part is a little tedious because she has to find which biscuits actually fit into this metal tin. The bottoms of the black muffin tin are bigger than the bottoms of the silver muffin tin. So she has to find the ones that actually fit into this particular muffin tin. And although I am allowing her to play, this is something very necessary to my setting. So there we are. She has the six muffins that fit into that silver one. So that's perfect. So now we're adding the little chalk pastels in tones of the yellow and we're adding a little bit of the orange and a little bit of the brown i'm laughing really hard dolls because right now i know this project is starting to look super pre-k but just trust the process take your time and just keep working there's multiple layers to a process like this i guess just like with regular baking in order for your items to look really good so just trust the process. Take your time, dolls. Don't get afraid if it starts to look a little pre-K. And that happens. That happens like that in real cooking. Things can look a little bad before they really start to look great. So take your time. Now I'm excited because little Gretchen is doing that little golden sea in a wash. And I feel like the biscuits are really starting to come to life. Just with that one little coat of the golden See in a wash. I can't wait to get that brown and orange shading on there. That's really going to bring it to life. So I just lowered her, just put layer upon layer of the gold. And then there, I, I just allowed her to go ahead and start to add the orange and the brown because she was really excited and she was doing a great job. So I just let her do her thing. She doesn't have to be super neat because there's really no way for her to mess it up. Plus that orange and brown shading is really bringing things to life. I didn't really tell her to start with that portion, but she's doing a great job, so I'm not going to stop her. Wow, these biscuits are starting to look like they would be great with a little butter. Mm -hmm. So let's get these biscuits on a plate. I actually have a little plain platter that I wanted to use. Now dolls, I plan to glue some of the biscuits to the platter. But I need to arrange them ahead of time to just to see how they'll work. So I kind of do like a dry fit of the biscuits on the platter just to make sure I like them. So take the time to actually arrange the biscuits on the platter. Now this is always a good practice because you don't want to start gluing it and then decide you don't like the way it looks. So I always try to arrange them first and then come back with the glue. I don't know about you dolls, but these biscuits are making me feel kind of like I need to pull out the butter or something. These biscuits will go great with the dolls at their breakfast table, or they could be great for dinner to go along with that stew that's on the stove. Yeah, this is turning out really nice. Little Gretchen did a great job on that shading. I'm just so proud of her. So yeah, I think it's time for a little shine. So I've got my handy craft glaze here, and I'm gonna treat it the same way I did for the eggs and the ham. And just give a light coat because if I were to make biscuits after I got done with them or brought them out the oven, I would just brush them with a light coat of butter. So that's what I'm going to do for these dolls. 
So I just wanted to bring the biscuits up close because you could really see them. So after adding a little glaze, I started to add glue to my little platter. So remember dolls when I told you some type you have food pieces that don't come out that great? Those are the ones you put on the bottom as your base. So I'm going to use the ones that are not so perfect and put on the bottom and put the ones that look the best on the top. And after they're glued, you'll never see the ones that don't look so great, but they're definitely playing a part in the overall display. So I just began to arrange them little by little, just using my tweezers. And as I arranged them, I tried to arrange them in a way that they would look like you had just taken them hot out the pan and you just popped them on there because you're ready to serve them or sit them on the table. So again, putting the least attractive ones on the bottom. And one by one, just arrange them in a way that'll be attractive. And you would arrange them just like you would on your life-size platters. You want to arrange them in a way that looks flattering and appetizing. And you want your platter to look full, not perfect, but you want them to just look like they're overflowing with biscuits and you put as many as you could on the platter at a time to serve your guests. Now, when you go to the second layer, you don't want to put globs of glue because you want it to dry neatly. And in this instance, although I'm excessive in my use of wax, when it comes to glue, it's the opposite. I don't like to see a lot of glue. So I just try to put a dot here and there in areas where I think that it'll be disguised with the additional biscuit. So as you arrange them, make sure you more or less set aside the best ones to sit on the top. Now, it just depends. It depends on the look that you're going for, but the ones that are a little bit more uniform in shape are the ones I tried to put near the top or around the edges. And the ones that are a little bit more irregular, as I mentioned, those are the ones on the bottom. But everyone has a place, and I really, really like the variation of the sizes and the shapes because, again, when I cook, when I make muffins and biscuits, my biscuits aren't perfect. They taste good, but they're definitely irregular. Mm -hmm. Now, this is definitely something you want to take your time with. You don't want to rush through it because after the glue sets, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much a done deal. Now, dolls, I want you all to know that this particular project took me about a week to complete because, you know, I have a real-life, life-size world I have to attend to. So don't rush yourself. Don't pressure yourself. You know, work on one part, come back to it. Work on another part, come back to it. So that when you're done, your project will be something that satisfies you and you're proud to put it into your doll house or room setting. I'm really proud of these little biscuits. I think they look beautiful. The only thing missing is a little bit of butter. This platter looks pretty full, but I just feel like I can get a couple more on. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to get a couple more on. I'm going to just add a couple dots of glue and really, really pile them up because I just want this platter to just look bountiful and overflowing. Yeah, a couple more globs of glue and a couple more biscuits, and this plate will be done. I really like the way that looks, dolls. Okay, so now all we need is a little bit of butter to give them some shine to make them look like there's melted butter on top. And I'm using my craft glaze, just like I used in the other video for the ham and the eggs. Now, if you haven't seen the rest of my kitchen series, definitely check that out in my playlist. These biscuits are going to go on my breakfast room table, and I think they'll go perfect with the ham and the eggs. This project has been so relaxing and satisfying. I definitely hope you dolls try this at home. And there are my biscuits, and they look beautiful to me. And that's why I tell you dolls, if you're satisfied, that's all that matters. So let's work on those muffins and get them together. So here we are adding the shading. And I haven't glued them inside the pan because I actually want them to be a removable depending on what type of setting I'm doing. So I just added a little bit of the brown and the yellow and I did have a little craft glaze still on my brush. So I've worked on them a while and they looked all brown and toasty and got little warm 
melted butter look as well. So I'm going to finish adding the dust into them and then I can add them to the tray. So we're going to leave these out on a tray so they'll be available for the workers to have a little snack in the afternoon with a cup of coffee. So I want to arrange these in a pretty decorative way. So here's my little glass. It's actually a cake taker or cake, cake plate, but I'm going to use them for my spare blueberry muffins. I think they'll look really nice. And to tell the truth, dolls, I actually had something else I wanted to put them in, but I can't find it. That's what happens when you have too many miniatures. You misplace things. <laughs> but I think they look lovely in this little cake plate. Yeah, these blueberry muffins look absolutely delicious on that little cake plate. That's beautiful. They look like they should be sitting on a buffet. So here's our last but not least little loaf of bread. It's all baked and ready to be decorated as well. Now it's a really simple loaf of bread, so it's not going to need a lot. But as I mentioned before, I always start out with my golden sienna. And I still start out with just a light wash all over the entire loaf of bread. And the one thing that's really nice about polymer clay, it more or less absorbs like what you put on. So each layer it catches or takes on whatever colors you put on it. So it makes it really, really nice when you do your shading. I like the variation of the tones and the shades it takes on as you add your layers of color. And it's going to help to define even that little dip at the top as I add more and more color. Now just watch as the shades change. So while the surface of the bread is still damp from the acrylic wash, I've just started to add the chalk pastels. And it's not going to hurt it, dolls, because it's going to dry. And to me, it just adds a different layer. So I had the brown and the orange mixed with a little bit of the yellow. And again, just keep on layering it on. You let it dry and you look at it a little bit and just see where you need to add more color. And dolls, don't make it hard. Don't make it complicated. There's no perfect way. And there's really no wrong way to do it. It's what you like. Now watch as I add the deeper colors, you'll really be able to see the dip in the top of the bread begin to come out. And it's going to look so cute in that little black speckled bread pan. Yeah, dolls, I really like this. And it's so simple. So again, just take your time with the shading. You know, don't rush it. Even if you get to this point and just stop because you need to look at something for a reference. Or you just want to give it a minute to come back to it. Just take your time. So now I'm coming back with a little bit of a deeper color to give a highlight around the edges, like where it would have gotten a darker brown color because of the baking. This is definitely an opportunity, dolls, for you to just play. Just imagine bread. Imagine what it looks like when it first comes out of the oven. It's all hot and warm and soft. And just how the crust looks on the outside. It's a little darker, a little richer. It has a little shine to it. But just imagine and create. So let me go ahead and knock this out so we can get to that breakfast table. <laughs> and dolls, you see, I just lifted it out so you could see the portion that's down in the pan is a little lighter. So to give that variation, I think that little loaf of bread came out really cute. <laughs> So dolls, here we are back at the rooming house breakfast table. So as I mentioned before in the previous video, I would need to arrange things and move things around so that the additional food items would fit. So let's take the time to fix that. Now dolls, remember I have wax under these pieces, so I have to move them kind of gently and kind of twist them up off of the fabric. And yes, you definitely can use wax on top of fabric. It works really well. So I'm just pushing things together and making things a little bit closer to make room for my biscuits. So first I want to add a dot of glue so that I can give everybody either a biscuit or a muffin. So I think this person here would like to have a muffin. Yeah, a blueberry muffin would look really cute on that plate. So I'll just add a muffin there. Yeah, that muffin looks really great there. I overheard the dolls talking 
and the person in this seat actually wants two biscuits. So that's what I'm going to put on that plate. So I'm going to put enough glue there that two biscuits will be able to sit on there. And again, although I put two biscuits on there, you don't want it to look perfect. Just put it where they're kind of like on top of each other, kind of stacked together, kind of at an angle. To me, that really makes that plate look a lot better. I almost feel like I might need some pepper on those eggs. <laughs> this looks like a breakfast table I remember as a girl. This is definitely not the low-carb table. Biscuits, bread, pie, and muffins. Yeah, that looks about right. I sure have enjoyed making this video for you dolls. Now, if you've enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe. And always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. For those of you all who don't know, this past Thursday evening, July 14th, 2022, I hit a thousand subscribers and I am overwhelmed, overjoyed. I am humbled and honored that you all have chosen to take this journey with me. And I thank each and every one of you to all my subscribers and also to those of you who haven't subscribed, but you're watching. I appreciate you as well. I'm working on a celebration for us as a channel for the dolls and for um, everyone in general for the month of August. So I'll have more details regarding that upcoming soon. I will have a special video to announce that and to let you know how the celebration um, videos will run. So I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And to all of you all, I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.